uh, service here. Uh, it says, I have a message saying this being this meeting is being live streamed. By staying in this meeting, you consent to being live streamed. Okay. All right. So we're being live streamed, yes? Yes, but now on Facebook. And after oh, I will take that, yes, yes. After I will take this recording and we'll put it on YouTube. Okay, okay. well, apologies to our apologies to Facebook. Uh, but as I was just saying, I didn't have any electricity this morning for a couple of hours. And you no, know, no, we tend to believe that electricity is a natural thing like gas or water. Uh, you know, oxygen, we have to have elect electricity 24 hours a day, and we have to have internet 24 hours a day. But Srila Sridhar didn't have internet, you know. I remember staying at the Mott, they had what they call load shedding, which meant they just turned off the electricity for four or five hours every afternoon. And, it was nice and quiet. So peace. Anyway, well, having said that, I don't know if it's worthwhile to to mention, but uh, there are some devotees who like these talks, and they're interested in creating some literature around them by way of making transcripts and uh, speaking of technology uh, Braja Sundari has found that there are very good transcription services available online and they do a real great job of transcribing for business um, I saw a couple of the transcripts made by machine of this talk. And the problem seems to be that if I say um, Krishna and Arjun at Kurukshetra, for example, the machine will misinterpret Arjun to be the moon in June or something. And uh, Kurukshetra, it won't make sense of. So the point being, the machine transcriptions are quite good when it comes to ordinary English, but when it comes to Vaishnava language, uh, it misinterprets a lot of things. So we need some folks who can help out, basically. So if you know a little bit of Hare Krishna philosophy, or maybe even a little bit of Sanskrit and Bengali, uh, contact Braja Sundari and, and see if you can help her out. Uh, transcribing some of these talks, and later we'll print this as a booklet or a book or a series of booklets and books for people who just like to read and don't have electricity and internet. All right, well, let's uh, proceed. I don't want to take up too much of your time talking about all these things. Again, um, this talk is free. We're not charging any money to anybody. And uh, you're welcome to share it with your friends. So I'm going to begin my discourse. We're talking this morning about this book by His Divine Grace, Bhakti Rakshak, Sridhar Dev Goswami uh, Maharaj, my guru. And uh, before we discuss the book, we give a little invocation. Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yukta Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuratan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Scha Sri Varshavanavi Devi Dayataya Kripabdaye Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Dayane Prabhave Namaha. 
Madhuryoj vala prema dya shri rupa nilga bhakti da shri gora karuna shakti vigrahaya namos to te. Namaste Goravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupanuga Virudha Pasidanta Danta Harine Namagora Kishoraya Sakshad Vairagya Murtaye Vipralambara Sambodhe Parambujaya Te Namaha Namo Bhukti Vinodaya Sachidananda Namine Gora Shakti Swarupaya Rupanuga Varaya Te Gora vir bhava bhumest vam nir deshta sajjana priya Vaishnava sarva bhoma shri jaganataya te namaha Vanshakalpa terubhyas cha kripa sindubhyeva cha patitanam pavanabhyo Vaishnavebhyo namo namaha So we're here discussing this chapter five in uh, our book, Rapanajivanamitam which is life nectar of the surrendered souls, positive and progressive immortality. And uh, so far we've gone through four chapters. Srila Sridhar is commentary is commenting throughout this whole book on the idea of surrender. Surrender in the sense of giving oneself, to give oneself. It's just the idea of surrender, but to make it more specific, uh, what we're really talking about is Srila Rupa Goswami's verse, Anukulyasya Sankalpa, Partikulyasya Varjanam, Rakshasyatati, Vishvaso, Gopritte, Baranam Tata. Like that, Atmani Vedanam, <coughs> Karpanye Atmani Vedanam. These are the six processes. Shadvida Shara Nagati, the, the six ideas, six rules, six paths of surrender. So, accepting what's favorable to Krishna consciousness, rejecting what's unfavorable. And we just read a very long chapter about all the unfavorable things. Now, the next point, he comes to uh, the idea of surrender in terms of accepting Krishna's protection. Rakshasyatiti vishvasu, uh, faith that Krishna will protect. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. And uh, Srila Sridhar says, Rakshasyatitihi mam Krishna paktanam bandavascasa kshemam vidhai vidhasyatiti yad vishvaso trivagriyate. He says, uh, certainly <coughs> Krishna will protect me because he's the true friend of the devotees. He will certainly bless me with all good fortune. So the fifth chapter deals with that. He says here, such faith is sustained. Uh, faith is a very, very difficult thing to come by. It's not so much the product of intellectual argument or knowing. Uh, sometimes intellectual argument can help us. It helps us to temper our faith, perhaps. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with metal work, but the word temper is interesting. We talk about someone losing their temper. but Temper is what happens to metal when you heat it up to a certain point and then cool it back down gradually by dipping it into oil or water, depending on the metal. And by doing that and then reheating it 
and doing that again. It adds flexibility and strength to the metal so that it's not brittle and it doesn't break. When it, when it breaks, it loses the metal itself loses what's called its temper. So we want to make our faith stronger. Uh, and sometimes it may be a certain amount of logic and argument can help us because we live in a time where science and reason is very highly prized. And to advocate faith with no logical backing uh, is dangerous in a way because it sets us up for ridicule by those who would say, well, this is fanaticism. Um, I've heard it said, perhaps this is attributed to Srila Prabhupada, that uh, religion without philosophy is blind faith, but philosophy without religion is atheism. So, especially preachers, those who are trying to augment the faith of others, rely a certain amount on knowledge. So, these scriptural references help us to temper our faith. And that's really the purpose of Srila Sridhama is writing this fifth chapter to share with other devotees uh, some scriptural help. And uh, Srila Sridhama in one of his lectures describes the idea of Sharanagati or surrender. And he says, please accept me and give me any service at your feet. I can no longer rely on myself. This is the idea of surrender or shar sharanagati. Uh, this is the proper attitude of a devotee seeking shelter. Please accept me and give me any service at your feet. I can no longer rely on myself. I've come to take shelter of your holy feet. You are my guardian. This is Sharanagati, to accept Krishna as one's absolute guardian. No process of service can be perfect without Sharanagati. And certainly, there can be no entrance into the higher domain. As such, Sharanagati, surrender is the very life and essence of devotion. It must be present in every form of service. Without sharanagati, our devotion will only be an imitation of service, not devotion proper. So it may be that we have some kind of service that we're trying to fulfill in connection with Guru and Goranga. But without soul surrender, that is only an outward show, a lifeless activity. Therefore, Sharanagati is the first condition. So this is why this is so important, because there are different processes of devotional service. This is me speaking. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, all these different processes of devotion. Uh, are very valuable. But if I'm simply doing them for show or as a ritual, then I'm missing the point. Uh, without Sharanagati, uh, this is all superficial. Uh, Srila Sridhar continues, if one is unable or does not have the opportunity to perform different types of service in the beginning, but he has only Sharanagati. He will get everything in the near future. Sharanagati will give us everything. 
It is the most basic and fundamental substance in the devotional world. The whole structure of devotional services based on Sharanagati. Prahlad Maharaj says the whole of Vedic knowledge is based on Atmani Vedana. You must give yourself holy. You must give yourself to the Lord. The substance of all devotional activity is to give yourself and surrender. And you can see Srila Sri Maharaj, he's repeating the same thing, but he's searching for a better way to communicate uh, his understanding. And in this way, if he says the same thing three or four different ways, he's trying to uh, communicate this idea. Uh, Sridhar Swami, the original commentator of uh, Bhagavatam, in his commentary about Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam, has said that if everything is dedicated to him, then all these things can be recognized as bhakti, otherwise it is all bogus. That's what I just said. If I hear chant and so on to fulfill my own purposes, then it is no longer bhakti. So many people take Krishna consciousness as a kind of a religion, and their understanding about religion is that religion is something we do to get a result. Uh, and whether that result be a position in Vrindavan or something as mundane as uh, prosperity, getting a better car, a better life situation, a better job, then you're trying to use Krishna for something. And it's not devotion. It's not dedication anymore. So Srila Sridhar continues. He says, whatever I shall do, it is for him then whatever will be done will be accepted as bhakti. It's the foundation on which bhakti stands. And then again in the search for Sri Krishna, another different place, Srila Sridhar Maharaj explains, we should always be eager to give up everything and devote ourselves exclusively to the highest duty. Those who have enough courage will jump into the unknown, thinking, Krishna will protect me. So this is very difficult to understand, but we can probably give a few examples. Mm -hmm. Those who have courage will jump into the unknown, thinking Krishna will protect me. I'm jumping in the name of God. He's everywhere. He will take me on his lap. With this idea, one who has real eagerness for the truth will leap forward. So there's some different ideas that you can kind of keep in mind to help you. You know, the Vedas are divided into Shruti and the Smriti. And the idea of Shruti is that there you're getting the nutshell ideas, you're getting the aphorisms. You're getting the rules, if you like, the axiomatic truths. So if we say, well, giving yourself entirely to Krishna, this is an axiomatic truth. And part of that means accepting his protection. That's another axiomatic truth. So that's almost shruti. But smriti means something that you can remember. So we have the Puranas, and of all the different Puranas, the king of the Puranas is the Bhagavad Purana, or the Srimad Bhagavatam. So if we look around for examples of jumping into a dangerous situation or uh, walking into the jaws of a, a terrible disaster, um, we can think of the example of Agasura, where um, one day in Vrindavan, while Krishna and the cowherd boys were grazing their cows near the Jamuna River, uh, a huge demon named Agasura appeared on the road. And Agasura was a giant python, a serpent demon. 
And he was so big that when he opened his mouth uh, on the road, from a distance it appeared to be a massive cave. And so the cowherd boys thought, oh, look, it's a cave. Let's go inside and play. And uh, of course, they're thinking, if there's any danger here, Krishna will protect us. So as the cowherd boys and cattle entered the cave, Krishna could understand, this is not a cave. This is a demon. Actually, Agasura was the brother of Putana and Bakasura, both of whom had previously tried to harm Krishna, but they were defeated by Krishna and Balaram. Putana by Krishna, Bakasura by Krishna and Balaram. And so uh, the cowherd boys are playing their flute and dancing along the road and entering into the cave, which is really the poisonous mouth of the poisonous Agasura. So Krishna follows the cowherd boys into the cave, and as he enters, he enlarges himself uh, so big that he chokes the serpent and breaks his mouth, breaks his jaw. And the cowherd boys think, well, we're tired of this. Um, we're finished with playing inside this cave. Let's see what's next. And they all waltz out just as uh, Agasura bursts open. Uh, so the cowherd boys come out of his body unharmed, and the Agasura demon is defeated. And this is an example then of how Krishna protects his devotees. Bhaktivinoda Thakur comments then that Krishna kills the, the demon, which represents cruelty and violence and lack of compassion. So Krishna will protect us, we hope, from the sin of a lack of compassion. But we're not to pray to Krishna for protection in the same way that we pray to Nisringhadev. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj prayed to Nisringhadev for protection and was rescued. Uh, another example is uh, Draupadi. When Draupadi was uh, insulted by the, the Kauravas, the sons of Kuru, led by Duryodhana. Dushashana in particular took charge of stripping her sari. Then she began holding her sari in the beginning because she was a strong woman to pre prevent Dushashana from tearing her sari. Uh, but then she realized this man is incredibly powerful. He's a Maharati, he's a warrior. I can't keep him from pulling off my sari. So her, she threw her hands up and said, oh, Krishna, you you come and you protect me, please. And uh, by throwing her hands up, she's surrendering because, of course, if her hands are in the air, it's much easier to strip off her sari. But then Krishna intervened and provided her with an infinite sari to protect her. So in this way, devotees rely on Krishna's protection. Another example. And there's a distinction that's kind of interesting that's uh, coming out of South India. And that's uh, the distinction between the uh, the kitten form of surrender and uh, the monkey cub uh, form of surrender, which is uh, Markata Kishora Nyai and Marjara Kishora Nyai. You might know this this word in Sanskrit, Kishore, like Kopa Kishore. Kishore means 
a young one. So Marketa Kishore it refers to the behavior of a baby monkey. And uh, when the monkey mother is going through the forest, she's swinging through the trees. She has to use both hands. So the baby monkey has to hold on for dear life. And um, this idea that we take a proactive uh, attitude towards surrender flows out of the South Indian uh, Alwar and Acharya Vedanta Deshika, who propagated this philosophy that we should take hold of the Lord just as a baby monkey takes hold of his mother. But in the same general line, which is the, the school that flows from uh, Ramanujacharya, Ramanujacharya, Deshika Acharya was important, but there was another important Acharya named uh, Manavala Muni. And uh, he liked the idea of the kitten, Marjara Kishora Nyai. So this Markata Kishora Nyai and Marjara Kishora Nyai. Um, kittens rely on their mother for everything. And so when they need to go from one place to the next, the mother simply picks them up and moves them around, uh, grabbing them by the teeth. And the, this way the cat carries the kitten with her to safety. And uh, this kind of surrender is also there, that we need not catch hold of the Lord, but the Lord himself will take care of us. And this is a kind of a, you know, you can think of this as being a little bit more passive, but look at the cowherd boys uh, and the people of Vrindavan with the lifting of Govardhan Hill. Uh, Krishna told the residents of Vrindavan, there's no need for you to worship Indra, the god of the rain. Uh, and they said, well, but don't we have to worship the rain god if we want beneficial rain to take care of our crops and uh, produce a nice harvest? And Krishna said, no, there's no need for that. In fact, you can just worship Govardhan Hill. Well, Ender didn't like that. He became very angry. And uh, he said, well, I'll punish these residents of Vrindavan with torrential storms. And then everyone went to Krishna and said, well, what do we do now? And Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill on his tiny finger, his pinky finger. He lifted the Govardhan Hill as an umbrella and held it over their heads. And everyone took shelter for seven days until Indra realized his mistake and uh, stopped the rains. So, of course, this pastime demonstrates uh, that beauty, the beauty of Krishna is superior to the power of, of Indra and the other gods. But at the same time, it demonstrates the kind of surrender that the residents of Vrindavan had, expecting Krishna's protection. So that might fall a little bit more under the rubric of uh, the uh, cat idea, the kitten idea of, of surrender, or the uh, marjala kishora nyai, where the mother cat picks the child up, the, the baby cat. Uh, and the, the kitten doesn't really have to do anything. So the residents of Vrindavan, uh, of course, they try to help Krishna. They think, well, how can Krishna really do that? So some of the cowherd boys are holding up a, one of their sticks that they use to prod the, uh, prod the calves with. And they're, they're helping Krishna hold up Govardhan Hill. But in a sense, uh, accepting the umbrella of Govardhan Hill, accepting the umbrella of Krishna's protection 
uh, may be an example of uh, the kitten style of, of surrender. So there's all these different uh, examples of Krishna's divine protection that we can find in the Puranas. And um, of course, Krishna protected the Pandavas. But in the case of Arjun, for example, uh, it's very different from the kind of surrender seen in the residence of Vrindavan in that Arjuna is very proactive. Krishna says, drive the chariot over here, do this, do this. He's always giving him advice. and But Arjuna has to carry out uh, Krishna's orders, Krishna's plan. So there's these two different schools, and it may be that uh, we think, well, chat Hare Krishna and be happy, just do some little service, wave a stick of incense and worship the deity and chant Hare Krishna, and everything will come. Or I remember there was one devotee at the San Jose Temple who used to take care of the cars. When the, when the car broke down, he had to raise the hood of the car and get inside the engine and uh, find out what was wrong with the starter and connect some wires together and go to the gas station and buy some oil. It was always dirty and covered with oil, but because of his hard work and surrender and, and service, uh, the cars worked and the devotees could go about their business and do their service. So there's the kind of surrender where you'd say, well, I'm just going to go wherever Krishna takes me. And uh, like the cat, or there's those who, who are very hardworking, um, proactive in their service. And on account of devotees like that, uh, the temple has boga in the refrigerator. There's incense to wave. There's flowers. Otherwise, the flowers don't pick themselves. Sure, the Prabhupada comments on this. He says, so Krishna says, Madhashrayan, this yoga system, bhakti yoga, is to develop attachment for Krishna under his protection, madashraya. Just like a, uh, a friend protects his friend, a master protects his servant, a father protects his child, or a lover protects his lover. Similarly, there is some protectional element, madashraya. Krishna is my friend, he'll protect me. And a really powerful example Again, this how Srila Prabhupada uh, decided against all the advice he, he, he had been getting, he decided to cross the ocean and he sailed from India, uh, the Indian Ocean, under he had to go under Africa into the Atlantic Ocean. And the Sindhya steamship line. Uh, it tells you a steamship is an old kind of ship, so he was risking his life, and uh, his ship was tossed by storms. And Srila Prabhupada didn't have any money, he, he had a few rupees and a few books, and uh, a letter of introduction to somebody in Pennsylvania, but hoping against hope and against all odds. Uh, he took this perilous journey at the age of 72 or 73. He was an old man. But expecting Krishna's protection. Krishna's my master. He'll protect me. Krishna's my son. Nanda Maharaj. Krishna's my son. He'll protect me. Krishna's my lover. He'll protect me. And elsewhere in the Gita, this is Srila Prabhupada again, uh, Krishna says, Kanteya Pratijani, he name bhakta pranashiti. That's in the ninth chapter. He says, My devotee will never be vanquished. Name bhakta pranashiti. 
O, o Kuntea, son of Kunti, tell everybody, proclaim this, publish it. My devotee will not be vanquished. So Krishna will give protection, just as he protected the Pandavas. He's giving protection to everyone, but general protection. But for the devotee, special protection, just like a nice gentleman, he loves everyone. But he gives special protection to his own children. My devotee is never vanquished. So Srila Prabhupada recommends the best thing is to take to Krishna consciousness, fully surrender to him, and he will be protected. Otherwise, there's no other way of being protected, will be carried away by the waves of Maya. This is the position. So this, that's the basic idea of what we're looking at here in the fifth chapter. And in the second verse, uh, Devaki says, Martyam Ritu Vyalabita Palayam Lokan Sarvan Mirbhayam Nadyagachat. O Supreme Lord, despite fleeing throughout every planet of the universe out of fear of the black snake of death, the mortal being cannot find a place devoid of fear. But when he's blessed with the fortune of coming to the lotus, the shelter of your lotus feet, he becomes reposed with a peaceful heart, and death itself flees from his company. So uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Mashucha, don't worry. Sarvadharma Parityaja, Mame Kam Sharanam Raja, Mashucha, don't worry. You become fearless. Abhaya Chara Naravinda, Srila Prabhupada's name, Abhai. Free from fear, Abhaya Charanana Vindare. Hmm. Only the absolute magician, the Supreme Lord, is capable of bestowing all good fortune. Uh, Lord Brahma says, Vishvasya Yastiti Layod Bhavahetu Radio Yogeshvaraya Pir Durapyaya Yoga Maya. Kshemam vidhasyati sano bhagavams tiarishas tatras madhya vimrishena kiyami harta. Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, he says, the supreme lord of the three worlds, who is the cause of the universal creation, sustenance, and annihilation, and whose magical potency is insurmountable, for even the greatest yogis will surely bless us with all good fortune. Could we ever doubt this? And then Srila Sridhar points out, he says, Apyadi api Sri Krishna Kataika Rakshana Vishvasa. Faith, even in the face of impending doom, the tidings of Sri Krishna is the only protection. In Maharaj, I, I like I really like this verse by Maharaj Prickett. He says, this is, He says, Tam Mopayatam Pratyan to Vipra, Ganga Chadevi Dritta Chitamishe, Dvijo Basrishta Kuhakastakshakova. Dashadvalam Gayata Vishnu Gata. He says, he's speaking to uh, Shukadev. He tells Shukadev Goswami, oh, and, and the others gathered there on the banks of the Ganges hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, pure Brahmanas, may you kindly know me as a surrendered soul. And let Mother Ganges accept me as one whose heart is offered to Lord Krishna. So this is after uh, Maharaj Prickett's fear has been purified by the holy words of Shukadev Goswami. He's heard the pastimes of, of Krishna, and now he has faith. So he says, um, 
let the winged serpent Takshaka or whatever magical creation has been incited by the son of the Brahmin, bite me immediately if it so desires. May you all simply go on singing the glories of the Lord. So Harikata, the glories of Krishna, and especially the holy name of Krishna is so powerful and purifying that it should banish uh, the fear of death, the fear of destruction, the fear of mortality uh, in the same way that Maharaj Prikrit, uh, his heart was purified by the holy words of Shukadev Goswami. And uh, in this way, keeping in mind that Krishna's protection is really for our faith. Krishna will protect our faith. He'll protect our soul. We may have problems in this material world. Uh, happiness and distress may come and go. But the benediction moon of the holy name of Krishna should rise in our heart and purify all our fear and give us complete protection and in this way lead us to the land of uh, positive and progressive immortality. So this book gives life nectar to the surrendered souls, and we hope that we were able to give you a little bit of life nectar this morning. And thus concludes my discourse on Prapanajivanamritam for Friday, July 28, 2023. Thank you all very much for Participating in Antishesh, Dana K, Kirti Dadidi, Rasanandak, Subhashani Kumar, there she is. I was thinking about you. I, I'd like to call you and, and say hello uh, one of these days. I have my brother visiting me from uh, the United States, so I've been very busy these last few days, but I'd like to be able to call and, and say hello and thank you for all the. Uh, wonderful times we had there in uh, Ireland, the land of saints and scholars. <laughs> well, Kumar is to talk with you. Yes, yeah. She's from Madras, the land of uh, Deshikacharya and Ramanujacharya and all the great Acharyas from South India but now living in the land of saints and scholars. I don't know how saintly the people of Ireland are now, but uh, you and Kumar are, are special jewels. That's a, a note from Ananta Shesh here, but it's in, in Russian. Three new messages. Uh, yes, uh, Mahayagi Prabhu, he's asking, but what if we do not remember about the Lord's protection? Well, that happens to the best of us. Um, then we do these little things like we wear our Kunti Mala, which is supposed to help protect us from the uh, Yamadutas, for example. You know, if the Yamadutas come and they see the Kunti Mala, then, oh, this is a... Hare Krishna man, we won't touch him. <laughs> um, if you can't remember specifically about the Lord's protections, you can take the holy name of Krishna, and that should purify your heart. It's not easy to remember uh, Krishna. We're very lost in our material world with our material senses struggling with maya and our false sense of happiness and distress but by taking the holy name of krishna we hope that some remembrance will come i just noted that scarlet bloom has the initials s b which are the same as Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> SB is whenever I 
you know, you, you want to write that short, SB 1.5.7, it's Srimad Bhagavatam, SB. So your initials are SB. I don't know if that helps, Anantashesh, you know. That's a, it's, it's difficult. I'm always forgetting Krishna. We forget Krishna when there's anger, hate, lust, desire, all these things. Srila Sri Ramarash used to say, I get besides myself, which means, you know, you're thinking Krishna, Krishna, but then something happens. It, it's hard to purify ourselves 24 hours a day, you know. But that's also why we have the Sangha. That's why we have devotees, because the devotees will remind us of Krishna. No, yes, li mui ni pomnim o sastitie gospoda. No, yes, li mui means, but what if the not pom pomnim o pomnim means remember. No, yes, we may not remember, but okay. if we do not remember, or the city, we can't remember. Yeah, I can't. Well, the other thing is, what, what did I say? Well, we have other, we have other things that help us, like our Kunti Mala, the holy name of Krishna. Then again, there's Guru. You think of your Guru, you know. You can't really remember Krishna because, well. Like George Harrison said, I really want to see you, Lord, but it takes so long. Or the other day I, re I was remembering, some devotee told me that by, by saying the Gayatri Mantra, the result is first you'll, you can hear Krishna's flute, then feel his presence, and then you will see him. But I'm not even close to that. But then there's Guru Dev. You can remember Guru Dave. What did he say? Don't do this. Do that. Think about this. Don't think about that. You know. You can. Re you have the the shastra as well. Sometimes I can't remember Sri Dharma, so I I look in the shastra. Oh, now I remember him. I remember his hands. Srila Sri Dharma said he had. Big hands, strong hands. They were a very dark, like a walnut stain color. And he had a, a, a very delicate gold ring with a, a tiny white pearl, blackish pearl set in it that he said was to help cool his brihaspati, I think. And uh, as he would speak, sometimes he would he would touch the ring and move it around, you know. I remember his hands. And when he would finish a point, one thing that really struck me was when he would, he, he used to sit on this massage chair. That was his favorite chair. It was all made out of wood. And uh, when he... When he would finish his lecture, he would reach over and tap the chair like that. Like, like he made a point, he, he had a thesis. His thesis had five points. Each point had three interesting ideas from the, from the Shastra and a couple of examples. And he would go through them one, two, three, four, five. When it came to the end, he would go back to the beginning and, and give a, a conclusion and resume his thesis. And when he finished, he would tap the, would tap the chair like, okay, that's my lecture. <laughs> and he told us that has God, after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would speak, 
that they would go to Srila Sridharmarsh and, and say, well, what did he say? And Sridharmarsh could give the whole lecture point by point because he, he had the ability to keep it in his mind. He had, he had a, a special gift for being able to organize the talk and remember it point for point. And his God brothers really treasured him for that. If you look at the Brahma Sanghita translation that we have, uh, and, and you see the language of that, and you look at uh, Professor Nishikant Sanyal and his translation of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, or his book, uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, it's the same language. Uh, The materialistic demonar cannot possibly stretch the transcendental autocrat who is ever inviting uh, fallen conditioned souls to participate with him in joyful stately dance. You know, wow. What a, what a lexicon, what diction. But I think that Professor Sanyal must have done the English for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. The strange thing is the only other person you'll ever see who speaks just like that is Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Like, for example, he'll use the expression pre predominated and predominating moiety. And his language is, is, is technical and philosophical, but very exact very precise. Um, so some Western devotees will say, oh, he's difficult to understand. He's difficult to understand because you didn't take the time to try to understand what he was saying. You didn't take the time to study it. But if you study Srila Sri Ramesh, you'll find he's really being precise. He's using the exact language that he needs. Anyway, but... So... To, uh, what if we forget the Lord? If you forget the Lord, remember your Guru Dave, because he's always there, right? Any more questions? I really like questions. I feel. I feel silly doing this if I don't get questions because I don't think people are listening. I'm just talking a lot of blah, blah, blah and hot air. I like the idea that maybe we can transcribe this and use it for something. Maybe there's something useful. I'm putting in a lot of quotes from Prabhupada and Sri Maharaj and scripture. Anyway, so let's think about the philosophy of the monkey and the philosophy of the cat and Deshikacharya and uh, Brahmanujacharya and protection. All right. Raka Krishna Marike, Mari Krishna Raka K. If Krishna wants to kill me, no one can protect me. But if Krishna wants to protect me, no one can kill me. I see where it says here live Facebook. Are we on Facebook now? Yeah, we got the Facebook link back up. Well, hello to all our friends in Facebook land. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, I don't want to talk more than my allotted time. It's been about an hour. But uh, I'm going to try to call Subhashini during these days. Say hello. Aurora says hello. She, she's, she's always saying, oh, you need to talk to Suvasani. And I'm like, well, I, I see her on you know, my Friday talks. No, no, no. You need to say hello. She's so nice. You know, she is. She makes the best prasadam. Very pucker. Very clean. Very pucker. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And uh, Rasananda, you take a, you take very good care of your sore throat and your cough. Don't talk too much, 
and try some of that chamomile tea with a little honey. You know, tea with honey, that's the best. That's better than antibiotics. But uh, take care of yourself, all right? All right. Well, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say hello. Gora Bhakta Vrinda Kijai, all devotees Kijai, Hari Haribo. I have a note here from Mikhail Mikhail. Mikhail Mikhail. Uh, yes, I, I will translate now. Hari Krishna, please tell me um, do we need to check, to test Guru when we are choosing Guru? Some people say, that there is a need only um, to believe to the way, to the path of our heart. But I also heard that we need to check, to test a guru that he coincides with sadhu and shastras. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm going to, I'm running this through Google Translate just to see what it says. Here we go. Please, I need to check Guru when choosing. Some people say only path of heart is needed, but one should check Guru for compliance with Sadhu and Shastra. Ah, well, yes, of course, that's a good point. Um, don't, once one has approached a teacher, and once one accepts the teacher, after that, try not to question the teacher too much because you have accepted the teachings. You've accepted the teacher. You have to see where does he, where does this go? Uh, there's a great movie called The Karate Kid. I don't know if you've seen that where Mr. Miyagi, I love Mr. Miyagi, he's the guru, he's the teacher, and the boy wants to learn karate, so he goes to the teacher, and the teacher says, okay, paint the fence, take the brush this way and this way, and paint the fence, and when you get to the other side, do with the left hand, and then, okay, so the boy says, well, okay, but will you teach me karate later? Yes, later. And then the next day, he has to uh, sand the deck. And he says, do the sanding with your right hand and then with your left hand. Same problem. And the next day, he has to wash, uh, wax the car. And this is wax on with two hands. And that's wax off. And the boy says, okay, I did all that, but when are you going to teach me karate? And he says, I taught you karate. Huh? Paint the fence. You know, paint the fence, wax on, wax off, sand the deck, you know. So sometimes we don't understand completely the pedagogy of the teacher. We don't understand exactly what the teacher is doing, but we have to be careful about rejecting the teacher. But that's after you've already accepted him. Before you accept the teacher, you have to look and see. Okay, well, what are my options? What does this one teach? What does that one teach? What's the method they use? And you can use your best intelligence and the help of others and what's written to help you decide, aha, this is my guru day. And that's a healthy way to go. So consult the saints. Is this man, you know, is he really the saint? Consult the books. What do they say? What does a saintly person do? Does he smoke marijuana? Does he drink beer? You know, does he eat meat? Um, how does he meditate? On what? Why? You know, consult the scriptures. Consult the saints. Take a look at the gurus, see what they're teaching, and then you make a decision. Don't just don't just go, oh my heart, ah yes, I have a good vibration. Uh, there was a guru 
very famous, I think it was Sai Baba, but I'm not sure, uh, who his picture would produce ash. Supposedly, I don't know, I never saw this, but I heard that a, a picture of such and such guru, it would produce ashes. And on the basis of that miracle, people would say, oh, I love this guru, I get a good vibration. His picture produces ash. But this is not our concept. Our concept is uh, Acharya Van Purusho Veda. The guru should represent the Vedas personally. And if he doesn't represent the Vedic truth, uh, and it, it, by the Vedic truth, we really mean uh, Krishna consciousness, Vaishnava truth. But if he's not representing Vedic truth, he has no understanding of the scriptures, then this is not the kind of guru that we're interested in and following. And I don't want to take uh, a lot of time. That's a great question. We could give a nice long talk. But thank you very much, Mikhail. Mikhail. And uh, now I really have to go. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Subhashani Kumar and Anandashesh and Krishna Chaitanya and Kirti Dadidi, Scarlet Bloom, SB Srimad Bhagavatam, Prajasundari. And that's all I can see on my thing here. Oh, there's, there's more people on here. There's Ramananda, R.T. Lane, Abhiram, Radha Madhava, G.A., and Donna K. So Hare Krishna to you all, and uh, Gora Bhakta Vrinda, wherever you are in the world, uh, my thoughts and prayers, my I don't really give benedictions or blessings because I don't have any blessings to give. But maybe I got a little mercy from Sridhar Maharaj and the higher authorities. So I wish the best mercy and, and uh, benedictions on all of you. So Hare Krishna, and we'll, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Jai Mahayagi Prabhu ki jai! Hare Krishna! <laughs> Thank you, Mahayagi Prabhu. Thank you, everyone. Everyone, uh, see you next week. Please accept our obeisances. Всем большое спасибо. Увидимся на следующей неделе. Пожалуйста, примите наши поклоны. Dandavats. Happy to see everyone. Dandavats. <laughs>